morning, y'all. This is Cherie with PassionatePaintVenture.com. Y'all, I'm probably starting earlier than I should have because um, we are making the best food for all your Valentine's sweethearts from our celebration box. Um, Lori made game day food yesterday. Today, we are making the Valentine's menu. So, we are starting out with a bang. Let me just tell y'all, all y'all gluten-free people out there, this entire menu for Valentine's Day is completely gluten-free, I think. Like, I'm pretty positive. You would definitely want to check as you look at the recipes. But this is in our menu box. Look how cute these little cards are with the little Valentine uh, little package or little, I guess it's a little letter. So, we're going to get started because I, got, I popped on early because I'm making a flourless chocolate tort it is insane and I already did all the whipping beforehand because it was so loud you have to like beat it for six minutes and I didn't want y'all to have to listen to that so we're going to get going right away on this I'm going to have to flip y'all and it's going to be kind of crazy but listen y'all if y'all want to save money for Valentine's Day don't want to get out in the crazy crowds this is for you and we will give away a $25 Amazon gift card for um, somebody sharing. So we're going to get started and let me, oh gosh, y'all, I get so nervous when I flip. I think I'm going to, here's what we're going to do. I think I'm going to flip. Yep, 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 yep. That's what I needed to do. Okay, except for y'all are looking at potatoes instead of, we're going to go here. Here we go. Okay. So this right here is, y'all, I have got so much going on. We are making the entire menu. So I'm gonna slow down because we're gonna be here a little while. There's no need to get in a crazy hurry. But like I said, this is the flourless chocolate tort right here. Um, and what this is, is five eggs, uh, one cup of sugar, and a fourth a teaspoon of salt that I have whipped on high for six minutes till it got thick and I got nervous because it started like having little bubbles and I was like y'all it's gonna I didn't want to mess it up because this is a little finicky and then in this loveliness we have three quarters of a cup of salted butter and one 12 ounce package of semi-sweet chocolate chips melted together and then I whisked in oh let me make sure I'm telling y'all right I think it was a fourth a cup a fourth a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, just your Hershey's that everyone usually has on hand. This is also a great pantry recipe, this chocolate tort. And uh, one teaspoon of vanilla. And then I, so I let that cool for 10 minutes. Well, actually it's been cooling longer than that. And then we're just gonna fold it in here. And I'm gonna try to not take a ton of time doing this, but I wanted y'all to see this because this can, this one, it's not hard, but it just, there's steps to it. You know what I mean. Thanks for sharing, Donna. Good morning, Patricia and Karen. It's so good to see y'all. We are going to make y'all, this is such good, good food. My, uh, so I only have my husband and son I've got four kids, so they're all grown and gone, and my son actually is grown as well, but he's living here until he gets married, um, which is going to be sometime next year, so we're glad to have him here, and since my job is making a lot of recipes and testing it, I'm really thankful because we need more people to eat because we have so much food all the time. I'm so thankful. I wish I could send it somewhere. I need to start just having like uh, testing recipe parties or something. Okay, so we're just folding this in. And then I've got a spring form pan that I have greased with some butter. And then I cut out a little piece of parchment paper and put it down in there and um, buttered it as well. Okay, so that is all of it. And somebody might lick that, I don't know. We will see. So I'm just gonna keep folding it in. Brenda, thank you, it is delicious. Y'all, this one is definitely restaurant quality. Actually, every one of these recipes is restaurant quality. 
Bridget, I wish I could send them your way. Girl, if we lived, we, well, we don't live too far apart. You're in Tennessee, I'm in Alabama. Um, Brenda says, all the good food uh, takes time. Yes, it does. Okay, we're, we're getting close. We're almost there. Uh, Y'all, my sweet mother-in-law's on. Hello, Nani. I'm glad I saw your message. She is in Arkansas. Wool Pig Suey. Uh, Y'all, my son went to Auburn. We are not basketball fans at all, but we did watch the Alabama, uh, not Alabama, Auburn, Arkansas basketball game the other night. My husband was cheering for Arkansas. My, my son was cheering for Auburn and Arkansas won, which is great for them, but sad for Auburn because they were on a winning streak. Okay, I think this is good. So, I have got my springform pan, and if y'all don't know what a springform pan is, um, it has a bottom, and I'll show you, and a little latch thing, and the bottom will pop out. And so then, in theory, what happens is you're left with these beautiful sides, but you could totally, I'm gonna put this down so I can pop it back in. You can totally um, <clears throat> do it. I think you could do it like in a, maybe an eight by eight or nine by nine pan. So I'm gonna pour this in here and hope y'all can see it really well. It's really awkward to pour and do things when you're trying to show it on a camera and you can't really see it yourself. I can do this to a certain degree and then I'm gonna have to turn it around and have the pan like in y'all's view. But I promise y'all this is so good. And uh, when you purchase our box, y'all get a private membership into our supper club. And y'all will see, if you go in there, if y'all are already members, search on the Valentine Day menu and y'all will see all of the pictures of people that have made it for the families and the reviews. They get excellent reviews, I'm just saying. Okay, that is good enough. I am gonna have a big old mess when I get done here, but my family's gonna be happy. So we are gonna celebrate Valentine's Day tonight, I guess, because we are having food. And I don't think I'm gonna do this again on Monday, so <laughs> there you go. I think I'm gonna put my hubby in charge uh, Monday, give me a day off from cooking. Okay, y'all let me know, do y'all go to restaurants on Valentine's Day like we, we have before, like early on in our marriage, but one time we uh, had a reservation and then we ended up waiting and uh, they didn't, We ne anyway, we never got in. And I think we ended up at like Taco Bell or something like that. So after that, let me wash my hands real quick. We kind of, don't really go out on actual Valentine's Day. But, okay, so this is ready to go in the oven. It is gonna bake for 42 minutes on 350. So that is it, 42 minutes, no longer, no less. It is the perfect time, and I'm gonna put it in now. minutes so moving on I'm gonna take a drink of water and see what y'all are talking about um, Deb and Andy said no to the crazy don't go out and honestly especially if you make this meal this is a pretty budget budget friendly recipe okay I think we're gonna go on to appetizers so we have some great tomatoes some fresh basil and mozzarella cheese, like the fresh stuff, not like shredded or whatever. And I did my order yesterday and they were supposed to give me the, they're like little pearls. So they're already like in the balls of mozzarella, but they were out. So I got the round block of it. I've got to find my card. Here it is. These are Caprice salad skewers, and they are so fancy and so easy and so yummy. Darlene said, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And Cindy said, not anymore. She cooks dinner at home much cheaper and easier. It is, and I like to like light the candles and everything. It's, it's nice, so. 
Alrighty, so here we are. Um, like I said, I was supposed to have like the little pearls of mozzarella, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of cutting on these. But y'all, this is easy. Like this is, I don't even know, you know, we're calling it a recipe. But, so I've washed my little grape tomatoes. I'm gonna take a toothpick and just stick my little grape tomato on there. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of basil and I'm just gonna roll it up. I love these flavors. If y'all have ever had a caprese salad, it's so good. And then take just a little bitty piece of the mozzarella and stick it on there. Let me find my little bow. So I've already done a few on here. So I'm alternating them. Let's see. Nope. Like that. So we will sit here and do a few more of these. We're not going to need many because, like I said, we only have three people. So let's try to get everything in y'all's view. I'm going to go ahead and get my mozzarella pieces ready. That'll make it and actually cut some of my basil so it's ready as well. <clears throat> All right, so this would be a great thing for uh, the kiddos to be able to do. They could sit here and do this while you're preparing the meat and everything. But these are super simple. You don't have to wait till Valentine's to make these. This is an any night uh, fun thing and perfect little appetizer too if you need to take something to a party. And you get a lot of bang for your buck because this is not a super expensive little appetizer to make. Oh, it's so good. Like, oh, when you see what we're gonna do to it at the end, mm, I cannot wait. I may actually eat some for breakfast. This smells so good. I love fresh basil. Oh, Sherilyn says she's guilty of making this Valentine's dinner twice since she's received the celebration box. It is the best dinner. Thank you so much, y'all. That really makes my heart happy. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love to hear that. Um, y'all, I mean, y'all are the ones who can sell these menu plans all day long because y'all have made the food and know um, how good it is. So, okay. I think that's enough for us to just have a little bite because we're gonna have so much food and I'm gonna move this out of the way. Okay, so there's two things that you could do for these. Let me move these over here. Alrighty, so we've got some balsamic vinegar and we have some extra virgin olive oil and some kosher salt. Let me make sure I'm looking at the recipe right, yes. Okay, so what we wanna do is we're gonna sprinkle just a little bit of kosher salt over these. Just a little sprinkling. And, okay, I'm gonna do one side one way and one side another way. Let me get, I need to get a spoon. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of olive oil. And I would probably, if I wasn't on live, wait to do this right before I was serving it. But then I'm just going to kind of drizzle this over that side. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my balsamic vinegar. Just kind of drizzle it. Or, y'all... If y'all have made the Caprice skillet chicken in the low-cal plan, y'all know about balsamic glaze now. It is the bomb, and you can skip the olive oil and the uh, balsamic vinegar and go straight to the glaze, honey, because it is, oh, and I think it's probably prettier because you can control it a little bit better. So, there you go. That is your Caprice skillet. No, not Caprice skillet. Oh my gosh. Caprice salad skewers. Otherwise, uh, akin to the Caprice skillet chicken in the low cow plan. We love our Italian food, apparently. Okay, so there you go. That is that. The Caprice salad skewers. Okay, we're going to move right on along to our potatoes that over here. 
Um, the next thing that we're going to do are Parmesan, Parmesan crusted baby potatoes. Now I have got a, I got a package of their, they're the little bitty baby Yukon Golds and I've cut them in halves or in thirds, whatever I need to do to kind of control them and get them in a good baking or roasting size. So now what we're going to do is I've got my handy dandy freezer bags and a my freezer stands and a freezer bag. So to this baggie, I'm going to add three tablespoons of olive oil. Thank y'all for sprinkling. One, two, and one other thing about this menu is a lot of these uh, ingredients are interchangeable. Like we used, just used olive oil for that recipe, we're using olive oil for this recipe, and so on. And so I really just have a few things out over here. Um, okay, the recipe calls for three pounds of baby Yukons. This is probably, I think, um, I ordered from Publix. I think this was maybe, this may only be about a pound and a half, so I probably could have halved this, but we're just gonna go with it and do the full on. And then I need a tablespoon of Italian seasoning, but because I just used that tablespoon, I'm gonna use my teaspoon and do three, three teaspoons equals one tablespoon. If y'all didn't know, I love to know those little tricks of measurements because sometimes your measuring spoons are dirty. And then two, speed, two teaspoons of garlic powder. Y'all, these potatoes, these would go in your regular rotation once you taste them. And they're so easy and I forget about them because you don't even have to peel the potatoes, which is always excellent. Okay, we need a half a teaspoon of salt. And believe a half a teaspoon of pepper as well. There we go. Okay, I think y'all can see that is really close. <laughs> uh, Cindy said, can you substitute anything for olive oil? Yes, I would think for sure for the potatoes, um, you could use canola oil. So any type of vegetable I think would be perfect um, for these. I do that all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of just squeeze all that together. Mixy, mixy. And then I'm going to put these in here. And we're gonna give it a little shake. It's gonna be like a little shake and bake over here. Okay, y'all. My chocolate tort is starting to smell really, really, really good. Seasoning. I don't, maybe there was a question. I am making, Sylvia asked what I'm making. These are Parmesan crusted baby potatoes. Y'all can see how the seasoning is covering them. Now, I'm not cooking these until tonight. And so, I'm trying to decide if I should just leave them in here or go ahead. I don't think it really will matter. I may go ahead and put them in my pan and just cover them with some pressure seal. And I may just leave them out on the counter. I don't think there would be anything wrong. What do y'all think? Susie said she substitutes grapeseed oil. Ooh. Deb, this is this calls for three pounds of potatoes, but this is a recipe that feeds six. So if you don't have that many you need to do, then you could cut it in half. But you should still use the same amount of seasonings. It'll be give us some little extra flavor. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour these in Whoop. Sorry, y'all. Bridget said you'd leave them in the bag. Y'all, I should. I just want y'all to see them. Maybe I'll pour them in here and then pour them back in the bag after we get off live. Probably what I'll do. <laughs> I just want y'all to see how pretty they look. And then we're going to roast them. They These are going to cook. Um, actually, the instructions on these recipe cards are so great because... Y'all look how pretty those are. Um, at, it gives you kind of timing on how to do your chicken, 
So these are gonna go in at 400 for like 10 minutes or so. And then you're gonna turn the oven down to 375 once you put your chicken in. But they end up cooking, I believe, about 40 minutes. So I'm gonna save my baggie and I'm gonna do like Bridget said, but I just thought y'all would wanna see that. And then after these roast and cook, you sprinkle with a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese and some uh, fresh parsley if you have it. I don't have parsley today, so I don't guess I'm gonna do that, but we are gonna move right along, y'all. We are moving and grooving. Okay, the next thing is we've gotta schlep in some raw chicken. Uh, Sarah said, I wasn't sure what to make for my family for Valentine's Day. Now I do. So excited. Yay. And listen, y'all, we actually have this menu. This, this is in our celebration box. And if y'all are interested in other menus like this throughout the year, we have Thanksgiving, Christmas, like, like we have the game day, birthday, Cinco de Mayo, grab the box. But if you just want the Valentine, we actually have it up on our website for free. Um, Nicole can put it in for us uh, in the comments, but if you go to passionatepennypincher.com and just type in Valentine Day menu, then you should be able to find it there and grab it for free and you can download it and um, print it off and you'll be good to go. There's also some pictures of everything. Okay, next up, bacon wrapped brown sugar chicken. Okay. What is not to love about that? You have bacon, you have chicken, and you have brown sugar. It is fabulous. So, let me grab all of my bacon and chicken, raw chicken from over here. And find all of my stuff that I've done, that I've prepped ahead. Okay, so here we go. Yum, 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 the raw chicken. Um, this does mess up quite a few dishes because of, well, especially me doing it on live here. But, okay, so this is uh, three pounds of chicken breast that I have cut in half. Y'all can see, like, not thin-wise, but like, just cut the breast in half. Thick, like, horizontal or whatever. Um, but... I didn't use three pounds. This is probably, uh, this is, was three chicken breasts that I cut in half. So I don't know how much that is. Probably about maybe a pound and a half or something like that. Whoop, let me move these potatoes out of the way. So this, um, I know Laurie was talking about this yesterday. Getting the food in here and this tripod especially, I understand why she, Laurie uses a crazy concoction of a, a paper towel that she, uh, Paper towel holder. Okay, that might be a little bit better. All right, so in this bowl, and I'll just do it like this, this might be easier. I have one and a half cups of brown sugar, four cloves of garlic, which I realized at 9.30 last night that I did not have garlic, but I had freeze dried garlic, which I never use. I think I got it on clearance, so that's what we're going with. And I have a teaspoon of kosher salt, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and I've just mixed that in here. Alrighty, so now um, we are going to dip the chicken in here, and then I'm going to wrap it in, ba in the bacon. Um, so, I'm probably not going to be able to see y'all's comments very much, but Janelle said to use the thinner bacon because it cooks easier, and I 100% agree. And do I have thin bacon? Absolutely not. I have thick bacon because I already had some. And bacon is so expensive that I did not want to buy more bacon. So we're gonna go with what we have. You're also gonna need some toothpicks again. So I'm gonna go ahead and set those out so I don't get my nasty chicken hands in here. All right, rolling the sleeves up, here we go. So you just dip it in here just like you were breading something. And now that I think about it, I may not do all these because it's gonna take forever. But y'all will get the picture. And then you take a piece of bacon. Um, you know what? 
Maybe I don't have to do this. Maybe I, well, yeah. I'm gonna have a holding place right here. Um, this is not the pan I'm probably gonna bake them in. But you just take a piece of bacon. Oh, y'all can't see. Okay, this is not working. Okay. Hold on. Ugh, okay. Take a piece of bacon and wrap it around and then toothpick it in. And so there's the first piece. So, y'all, I cannot, I don't know how to get my camera. Now that y'all can see that. I'll, I guess I'm just going to go back and forth moving it. Okay, we'll do another one. I might just do three. Because I don't want to keep y'all on here all day watching me schlep the chicken. Schlop the chicken, schlep the chicken. Oh, Cindy said bacon is $10 a pound. Oh, my word. I don't know if it's that bad here yet. But, yeah, it probably, you know what? Now that I think about it. I usually get mine at Kroger. Um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead, since I'm in here doing this, go ahead and just do a few of these in the brown sugar. Actually, I think the freeze-dried garlic may be working pretty well. Zoom camera out. Smart idea. I definitely could do that, except for my hands are dirty right now, but I will do that in a minute. I know y'all like to see what's going on, but this is... This is ridiculous. Let me wash my hands real quick. <clears throat> okay, now let me see. This helps. Actually. No, that's not helping. Okay, that might. The problem is the my tripod. So if you can think, it has three little legs, and you can only fit, you know, a certain amount of things under the legs. And also, when I'm trying to see y'all's comments, um, as well, it's just tricky. I'm just gonna tell y'all, you gotta trust. You gotta trust us because it's it is definitely tricky. See that? This, okay, where I have the uh, brown sugar is in between those legs, but never mind. I don't know if y'all can see. See, I still don't think y'all can see. And I don't have long arms, so I can't like stretch out way. It's just awkward. I'm just telling y'all, I got to come up with a better situation because I think there has to be a better way. And it might just be doing like glory and putting it in. Um, like I, I had a vape, okay. Laurie has also used a vase with popcorn in it and you can maneuver like if you stick your selfie stick in it You can maneuver around and I had a vase actually. I still have it somewhere with um, some Rice in it and I was doing that for a while But people kept coming in here going. Why do you have this vase with rice in it? And I was like, okay, I know this looks crazy um, But I just haven't gotten as good at maneuvering it around as Laurie has. I'm gonna do one more and then oh y'all y'all should smell the flourless tort flourless chocolate tort smells fantastic okay so you just go ahead and stick those in let me wash my hands and then I will come back and tell y'all how to bake this oh actually nope you sprinkle extra you're supposed to sprinkle extra brown sugar on top so, you definitely want to do that. And then let me wash my hands and I'll come back and tell y'all. Oh, I wish y'all were here and you could smell. It smells so good. Alrighty, so this is the bacon wrapped brown sugar chicken. And you are supposed to bake it at 375 for okay well first of all you want to put it like I'm gonna move this to a different dish a 13 by 9 baking dish try not to have your bacon pieces touching and then um, you can also sprinkle oh I forgot about that with some smoked paprika let me do that real quick 
it gives it a little a little color and a little flavor a little something something and we're gonna bake 30 minutes or until cooked through and it may take depending on how thick your pieces are it may take a little bit longer then you're gonna to wanna to pop it under the broiler to get that bacon to crisp up. And um, whoever said it a while ago was completely right on the thinner bacon does work better. So I may have to figure something out since I have thick uh, bacon. Uh, Rosie said, can you put some oil or olive oil spray so it, uh, the brown sugar sticks better? Absolutely, that's probably a great idea. I have not made this probably in two years, so I couldn't remember about the brown sugar if I had any tips and tricks. But if y'all do that, let us know because that is um, a really great idea. Someone asked what the smoked paprika bottle looks like. This is from Spice Islands. And smoked paprika, it just has a smoky flavor and it just is a little bit more fancy than regular paprika. I kind of almost use all smoked paprika now. I don't know why I kind of got switched over to it. Um, so yes, Cindy, it is reg it is different than regular paprika because it just has a little, little bit of a smoky flavor. All right, so the last recipe, and I'm not gonna make it um, because I don't want it to get soggy, but it's the mixed berry spinach salad. Let me grab y'all my ingredients and I'll show you. Y'all seen Laurie make this salad. A million times. This is her all-time favorite salad and salad dressing. But so what I'm gonna do tonight is I've got baby spinach, I've got some strawberries, and if you've got some blueberries, that would be excellent to add in there. I've got goat cheese. You could use um, feta if you wanted to as well. Some people, like my husband doesn't like goat cheese, so I'll use feta on his. And then these honey roasted pecan pieces, or if you have like praline pecans, um, they're excellent as well. And then you'll just use a balsamic vinaigrette, or actually, y'all, I'm not even lying. Where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go? Y'all know I'm crazy with this balsamic glaze. You could actually use that as well if you did not want um, to use the balsamic vinaigrette. So all of these flavors from this recipe just mingle all well together. Um, we've got, I can just, we have our bacon wrapped brown sugar chicken. We have our caprice uh, skewers and our Parmesan roasted potatoes, and then our salad. Oh, and uh, let me switch all around. Woo. I was also going to make Shirley Temples because that is in there too, and how fun is a Shirley Temple, which let me just tell y'all how to make it if you do not know. But our store was out of, oh my goodness, y'all. Mercy, I am definitely having problems with my tripod today. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me tell y'all how to make a Shirley Temple. You either get ginger ale, 7-Up, Sprite, whatever your beverage is that's clear, um, soda, or in here in the South we call it a Coke. Uh, and then you're going to use either the juice from your cherries or grenadine syrup. And I don't have grenadine, grenadine syrup, but um, I, I was just gonna use the juice from my cherries and they were out. Publix and Kroger both out of the maraschino cherries. So I don't have any fancy Shirley Temples to show y'all, but I have the card and it's really cute and it's backwards for y'all and I'm so sorry. Y'all, that was a lot of cooking. I have 16 minutes left on my chocolate tort. Let's go see if we can see it. Okay. Y'all, I'm going to make y'all dizzy and crazy today. Let's see if we can. Let me see. I don't even know. I've never done this before in my whole life. Um, let's 
switch all around to my oven. I don't want to open the oven. Oh, can y'all see it in there? And you can see how dirty my oven is. Okay, the, the chocolate tort is puffing up. And so that's what's going to happen. And then when you take it out, it's going to sink. So don't get scared if it sinks because that is normal. And that is what is going to happen. Um, and it's going to be kind of flaky, like looking crusty. And it'll look kind of dry. But I promise you the inside is not dry. It is fabulous. And y'all are going to love it. So, y'all. Make your Valentine menu, grab this box, or get it for free on our website. And y'all have a great day. If I can pull it off, I always say this, and I never can pull it off. I would love to get back on and show y'all the finished products later tonight. We will see how it goes. You never know what's going to happen. But I hope that y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, Jane said, I bet you could make the skewers and potatoes ahead. Um... And she said she was going to modify it and make it, I think, this weekend. I didn't see it all. But let me tell you, yes, definitely. And I think there are tips and tricks. You could definitely make the flourless chocolate tour ahead, a day ahead for sure. Um, potatoes for sure, caprese. And even, we'll see how the chicken does all day. I know that that brown sugar is going to sink into there and kind of, you know, get juicy. So I don't know that that's going to be a great one to make super, super ahead of time. But... If you have everything else made ahead of time, then you are, you're doing great. So anyway, thanks for watching y'all. Y'all have a great day and y'all keep sprinkling and sharing the video to win a $25 Amazon gift card and happy Valentine's Day, happy game day, happy weekend. Everybody stay safe. See y'all later. Bye.